Air brake tanks are part of powerful brake systems used on large vehicles such as lorries and buses. When the driver depresses the brake pedal, the tanks release compressed air to activate the brakes, stopping the wheels. It's not exactly breaking news, but try stopping me from telling you how they're made. The energy used to stop a big vehicle comes from air. It's compressed and stored in the brake tanks, so there's always a ready supply. They make air brake tanks from industrial grade steel. A press forces the steel around a dome form and shears the edges to produce the tank's end caps. It also punches a hole in each end cap for a fitting. The cap's dome shape is critical, allowing it to withstand the air pressure inside the tank. The tank caps now go under sprayers that wash away residual oil from the pressing process. More steel sheeting goes into another press. It's twice as thick as the steel used to make the end caps. This press is punching and forming brackets for attaching the air tank to the trailer undercarriage. It takes six punches to shape the flat sheet of steel into the curved brackets. Here's an example of the six formative stages. Machinery now flattens and cuts bigger sheets of steel for the tank body. Clamps grip the sheet along the edges and position it under another punch press. It perforates the steel where fittings are to be installed and also stamps the company name and other manufacturing information onto it. They feed the sheet to a roller that curls it into the tank shell. The worker clamps it into a fixture. A carriage moves a welding torch overhead to join the ends and create an airtight seam. The weld is then inspected. Fittings are welded into the holes that were punched in earlier. Two of the fittings are for attaching valves that control the flow of compressed air. The third fitting will be used to connect a line for draining water formed during air compression. A metal worker reinforces the fittings with large collars that help the connections withstand any bumps in the road. He places the brackets and end caps in an automatic welder. It fuses the bracket to the cap, one for each of the air tank's end caps. With both end caps now installed on the cylindrical shell, it's time to seal the air tank. The tank turns on a welding lathe as automated welders bond the caps to the shell. The air tank structure is now basically complete. It's time to put it to the test. After plugging the open fittings, they pump highly compressed air into the tank, more than it would usually handle. If it can take all the pressure, it's structurally sound. They bring the pressure down slightly and check for leaks. Bubbles in the water around it would indicate air is seeping out. After cleaning, the airtight tank heads into a powder coating station. Sprayers apply the powdered resin coating. The particles are positively charged and the tanks are negatively charged for an instant attraction. The black powder clings to the tanks as they now go through a gas-fired oven. The heat melts and bonds the coating to the surface of the air brake tanks forming a tough skin that's rust resistant. After the tanks cool, a worker inserts a long thin paint gun through one of the fittings to spray a rust proof coating on the inside. He then inserts plugs into all the fittings to protect the threads from damage until they're ready to make all the necessary connections. It's taken about five hours to produce these tanks and now it's time to put the brakes on.